Hey, what's up guys? In this Lightroom Classic tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the Tone Curve tool. So usually when you start off with Lightroom and you want to make some adjustments to the lighting or exposure, most people go to the basic panel and go to the Tone tools or the Tone sliders here to control exposure, contrast and more. But if you want finer control and see what's happening with your image, you should use the Tone Curve tool. So the tone curve, it's a graphical representation of the luminance values of your image, similar to how the histogram is a representation of the tonal value. And as you can see on this curve right here, this is the default curve. It's usually 45 degrees. Right behind this curve, you can see a histogram. This histogram is a little bit taller because it has more space uh, vertical wise. And this one is a little bit more short, but anyways, the tone curve, it's represented on the left side by the dark areas or the shadows. In the middle is the mid-tones and the right is the highlights or the white areas. And then there's the input and the output. So the input is the input luminance values, which is represented by the horizontal axis. And the output is represented by the vertical axis. So I'm just messing around with the tone curve right now. And I can reset this tone curve by double clicking on this adjust icon here. Regarding the tone curve, if I want to make this image more brighter and mainly the mid tones, I can click on the middle of the tone curve and drag it up to make it brighter, or I can drag it down to make the mid tones darker, but you can see it's a curve. So it affects the entire image. If I want to remove this point right here, I can double click on it. And a classic example of using the tone curve is making the shadows darker and the highlights brighter, which in effect is the contrast slider. So I'm just going to put a point here, drag it down a little bit, and then I'm going to put a point here and drag it up a little bit. And that makes the image have a little bit more contrast. If it is too bright, you can play around with the point right here. You can add as many points as you want, actually to mess around with the image or improve the image. But the more points you add, the image may start looking soft or a little bit more clunky. So you want to minimize the amount of points you have on the tone curve. And I'm just going to adjust it or I'm going to reset it by double clicking on the adjust icon. So another way of tuning the tone curve is by using this point curve tool right here. I'm just going to click on it and then I can select different points of an image. So I'll just click on this orange. I can increase the highlights or, or lighten it up or I can decrease it and darken it up. And here I can brighten up the sky and I can also brighten up the shadows here. So you do got to be careful once a tone curve moves more away from the S shape, then it starts looking a little bit weird. So let me just reset this here. Another thing is, let's say with the curve, I'll just make the classic S curve for the contrast. I can change the input and output by just dragging and sliding over here. Or I can click on the number here and change the number or press the up or down arrow keys to change the input and output values. Another thing is if you want a little bit more help from Lightroom, you can use this point curve right here and you can use like a linear this is the default. You can use the medium contrast to add a little bit of contrast. And this is the strong contrast. Okay. And I'm just going to reset this here. So I'm working on this tone curve right now. And if you want even more help from Lightroom, you can click on this. This one gives you a little bit more help and I'm just going to click on it right now. And you can actually get more control of the tone curve. Here are different areas of the highlights, lights, darks, and shadows. Technically, like Lightroom is trying to help you or help the user with different labeling of the lights and darks just to control different areas of the tone curve. So I can like play around with it, change the highlights, change the lights and so forth. But most of the time, I usually stick with the, this part of the tone curve right now. Let's see what else we got here. So we can change actually the input and output values right here. It's not making a big difference. Let me see. Yeah, it's only making a subtle change right here. This controls the levels or the black points and the white points, but that's for another video. Now you can see this tone curve, it controls the entire alpha channel, but 
actually let me reset everything here this controls the entire alpha channel but if i want to control the dedicated rgb values or the rgb curves i can use this this is the red curve and this this is complemented by cyan then there's green with its magenta and then there's blue with its yellow complement let's say i want to make like an antique or like a vintage look one thing i can do is like increase a little bit of red in the shadows and put a little bit of green in the highlights so it gives it a little bit more of a vintage look but you do got to be careful when you're playing with these uh, rgb tone curves because let me reset it here if you go out of control right now you can make the image look a little bit wanky so i just put too much red here here i put too much green so you have to make subtle changes with these curves but these curves do help a lot when you're trying to do a little bit of color grading and let me see if I can do a cool color grade here. Let me see. Increase the blue here. Put the yellow highlights with the green. I'll put this like this. And let's see how it looks. And make sure this one's reset. This is a reset. So this has like a vintage look. So let's see the before after before and after so just playing with these alpha or rgb values i can change the uh, look or appearance i give it a vintage look to this uh, image so that's pretty much it for the tone curve if you guys enjoyed this video give it a like subscribe and make sure to check out my photography on instagram and as always, live easy, sleep breezy, and stay lovely.